is Redeemer. God is worthy of worship. God is the Lord. God is the one true God. God gives new life. God is provider. Stronger, a king of glory. 
Hello there, everybody. How are you today? Let's go ahead and say today's memory verse together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 6. Let's go ahead and say it together again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 6. You guys are Fantastic. Hey there, Chicken Nuggets! How are you today? Well, as you can see, I'm ready to go. I'm about to go hike in the desert. I got everything I need in my backpack, I got my walking stick, but what do you think I have in here? What do you think are some essentials that I should be carrying on my hike in the desert? Essentials meaning what do you think are the most important things that I need to have in my backpack if I'm about to go take this hike in the middle of the desert? Go ahead and put it in the comments below. What do you think in my backpack? Those are some great answers. But I'm actually missing something very important. I'm missing one very important thing. Do you know what that is? I'm missing a friend. Yeah, a friend like you. See, if you're gonna go camping in the desert, a desert you've never been to before, would you rather go alone or have a friend? Would you rather be by yourself camping in the desert in the middle of nowhere where you've never been before or would you rather have a friend? I'd rather have a friend, so do any of you want to come along on my camping adventure? Go ahead and put it in the comments below. Do you want to come on my camping adventure or would you rather camp alone in the middle of the desert? Let me know. Put some fun emojis, put in the comments. What would you rather do? Okay, I have another question for you. Would you rather have your camping friend be somebody who gets easily lost or somebody who knows the best camping spots and all the best trails? Would you rather your camping friend be somebody who gets lost easily? Let me know in the comments below. Would you want a friend that gets lost? Or would you want your camping friend to be somebody who knows where all the good camping spots are and who knows where all the trails are and how to get there? Yeah, honestly, I would rather have a friend who knows where they're going because sometimes I'm the friend that gets lost. Okay, okay, I have one more question. Let's say there's some dangerous animals where you're going. Would you rather have somebody who's, ah, run away, there's a dangerous animal. Or would you rather have somebody who can stay and protect you? What would you rather have? Let us know in the comments below. Would you rather have a friend who's, ah, panicking, there's a dangerous animal, run away. Or would you rather have a friend who can stay and protect you from that dangerous animal? I'm gonna let you know right now, if you're camping with me, I hope that you are the strong, brave friend who's gonna protect me from dangerous animals because I may happen to just run away. <laughs> I don't like dangerous animals, so if you're coming camping with me, just remember, you need to be brave, okay? Be brave for the both of us. Well, those questions were a little bit silly, but if we think about it, if we were to go camping in the desert, we would wanna bring a friend who can guide us because they know the way and a friend who would protect us if a dangerous animal came to attack. In our big God story, we're gonna discover that the Israelites needed that too. But before we get any further, let's ask God to show us what he wants us to learn from his word today. So everybody, let's close our eyes and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Jesus, we love you so, so much. You're so awesome. So Father, we ask you if you can please help us. Help us to understand everything that you want us to learn from your word. As we dive into today's big God story, have the important 
things that we're supposed to learn and remember jump out at us so that we can hold on to them throughout the rest of the week. We love you so much, Jesus, and we thank you for letting us have this great opportunity to hang out with our friends in service, even if it's online or if we happen to be in church today. Help us to have a really, really, really awesome class today. We love you, Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right, chicken nuggets, let's dive in. Last week, we heard about how God provided water and food for his people after they left Egypt. But God did not just give the people the things they needed. He gave them something much more important. He gave them his presence. Now, what does it mean when someone is present? If you have any ideas, any guesses, or if you know what it means, go ahead and share it down below in the comments. What does it mean when someone is present? Like, what does that mean? Are they a present? Are they wrapped up as a gift and now, hey, they're a present? Or does someone being present mean something different? I don't know. You let me know. Those are some great answers. Yeah. When someone is present, that means they're nearby. It means you can see them, you can hear them, you can touch them, because they're that close. So if a friend is traveling with you, they're giving you their presence. They're being nearby, near to wherever you are. God is not a human being, so he had to show his presence to his people in a different way. Does anybody have any guesses on what that way might be? How did he show his presence in a different way? Well, he showed his presence by way of a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Well, go ahead and open up your Bibles to Exodus chapter 13. We're going to look at verses 20 through 22, and let's find out what God's word has to say. The people left Sukkoth. They camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in the pillar of a cloud. It guided them on their way, and that night he led them with a pillar of fire. It gave them light so they could travel by day or at night. The pillar of cloud didn't leave its place in front of the people during the day, and the pillar of fire didn't leave its place at night. This pillar looked like a cloud during the day, and it looked like a fire at night. God was present in the pillar of cloud and fire. He traveled with them on their trips from Egypt to their new land. The cloud and fire of God's presence didn't just travel with the Israelites. God guided them through the desert. How many of you have heard mom or dad's phone or maybe the GPS in the car say something like this? In 300 feet, turn left. Now what happens if you don't obey that voice that's giving you directions? Maybe you're going to hear the GPS say something like this. Boop, boop, boop. Recalculating. Yeah, so if you miss the turn, you're going to hear your GPS saying, recalculating, recalculating. The GPS voice can direct you because it's connected to up-to-date maps. But God is a much, much better guide than any GPS machine or phone app. God knows everything. He knows where the roads are today and where they'll be in 10 years from now. He knows exactly when and where there will be a traffic jam, and he never needs to say recalculating god never ever needs to stop and think about what to do next it must have been so wonderful for the israelites to have god as their god god showed them where to camp to find water he helped them find some of the best routes through the barren desert because god knows every last thing about that desert that the israelites were traveling through he knew every problem before it would happen and he knew how to avoid it the Bible tells us that the Israelites moved when the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire moved. And when those pillars stayed put, the Israelites stayed still. So let's open up our Bibles in Numbers chapter 9. And let's check out a few verses there and see what God's word has to say next. When the Lord gave the command, the people of Israel started out. And when he gave the command, they camped. And as long as the cloud stayed above the holy tent, they remained in the camp. Sometimes the cloud remained above the tent for a long time. Then the people of Israel obeyed the Lord's order. They didn't start out. Sometimes the cloud was only above the tent for only a few days. And when the Lord would give the command, they would camp. Then when he would give the command, they would start out. And sometimes the cloud would only stay from evening until morning. And when it lifted in the morning, they started out. But it didn't matter whether it was day or night. When the cloud lifted, the people started out. It didn't matter whether the cloud stayed above the holy tent for two days or a month or a year. The people of Israel would remain in camp. They wouldn't start out. But when the cloud lifted, 
and they would start out. When the Lord gave the command, they camped, and when he gave the command, they started out. They obeyed the Lord's order. They obeyed him just as he had commanded them through Moses. Let's pretend that we're the Israelites. We just woke up and it's morning and we see that the cloud has lifted. So what do we do? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. We're the Israelites. It's morning. We just woke up. We see the sun shining and the cloud, the pillar of cloud, has lifted. After reading those verses that we just did in Numbers chapter 9, we know that what we're supposed to do next is pick up and get ready to start out following God's order. So, okay, the pillar of cloud is moving. What does that mean? We're marching. We picked up all our stuff and we're marching, we're going, we're following God. Now, let's say it's nighttime and the pillar of fire now has appeared and it's still moving. So what do we do? Well, we keep marching. We're just marching in the evening. We keep going. The pillar is going. We keep going. But wait! The pillar of fire stopped. What do we do? That's right. Now we stay still and we camp here. For however long that that pillar is going to stay there is how long we're camping here. When God wanted his people to travel, the cloud and fire would move. When God wanted his people to camp, the cloud and fire would stay in one place as long as the Israelites should camp there. Can you imagine how wonderful it was to know you were exactly where you should be because you could look up and see the cloud and fire and know you were in the right place? We know God's presence in the fire and cloud guided the Israelites. But did you know that God's presence in the fire and cloud also protected God's people? Do you remember what happened when the Israelites needed to cross the Red Sea? Does anybody remember what was happening? Go ahead and type it up below. Give me a quick recap, a quick summary of what was going on when they were ready to cross the Red Sea. Yes, those are some great answers. So Pharaoh's army was chasing the Israelites and they were super scared because they thought they were gonna get captured or worse, killed. But just when it looked like the Egyptians might catch the Israelites, the pillar of fire and cloud moved from in front of the Israelites to behind them. So let's take a look at Exodus chapter 14, verses 19 through 20 and see what is going on in the Bible. The angel of God had been traveling in front of Israel's army. Now he moved back and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved away from in front of them. Now it stood behind them. It came between the armies of Egypt and Israel. All through the night, the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other. Neither army went near the other all night long. The pillar of fire and cloud stood between the Israelites and their army. That night, the cloud and fire protected the Israelites by giving them light and by hiding them from the Egyptians. God's presence protected the Israelites. All throughout the rest of the trip, the Israelites could look up and see the evidence of God's presence. They knew when to rest, and they knew when to travel. So let's jump back to Numbers chapter 9, and we're looking at verses 21 and 22. Sometimes the cloud only stayed from evening until morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they started out. It didn't matter whether it was a day or a night. When the cloud lifted, the people started out. And it didn't matter whether the cloud stayed above the holy tent for two days or a month or a year. The people of Israel would remain in camp. They wouldn't start out. But when the cloud lifted, they would start out. They knew God could protect them when they needed his help. And it must have been wonderful for them to know that God was with them. Did you know that God hasn't changed? He still lives with his people. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become one of his people. He becomes your Savior, your guide, and your protector. You probably won't see God's presence in the form of a pillar of cloud or fire, but then again, maybe you might, because God hasn't changed. He still wants his people to know that we are not alone because he is with us. But whether or not you see a fire or a cloud, you will know that God is with you because you have asked Jesus to live in your heart and life. And when you ask him to come in, he does. And just as a pillar of fire and cloud did not leave the Israelites alone in the wilderness, once you ask Jesus into your heart and life, he will not leave you alone in life. And if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you know God's presence in another way. You know God's presence through the Holy Spirit being powerfully present in you. When God's people traveled through the desert, God's presence went with them in a pillar of cloud and fire. If you ask Jesus to be your Savior, then God's presence is with you as well. 
I want you to think about a time when you felt God's presence guiding you or protecting you. I also want you to think about things in your life that might make you feel God's presence in a special way. I want you to take the next few moments to really listen to what you think the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Just like last week, we're doing this new thing called Bible Minute, where I'm going to read a verse to you maybe a few times. And as you're listening to that verse, I want you to really listen and say, God, what are you saying to me? Holy Spirit, what is it that you want me to understand or know from this verse? What are you saying to me? And if you feel comfortable enough to share with us in the comments below, go right ahead. If you're not too sure, that's okay. You don't have to share with us just yet. Maybe write it down for later so you can remember all the things that God has ever spoken to you. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8 says this, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. I'm going to read that again. Deuteronomy 31 8. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. What do you think that verse is saying to you? What do you think God is saying to you through that verse? You know, some of the things that jumped out at me at that verse were that the Lord goes before me. So just like the Israelites where he was leading them and guiding them with his presence, that same God is leading and guiding me every day. And don't be afraid. Well, yeah, I don't have to be afraid because God will never leave me. His presence will always be with me no matter where I go. And that makes my heart really happy to know that I'm never going to be alone. And so I don't have to fear that because I have God by my side always. During this week, maybe you can spend some time in God's presence. Maybe you can read the Bible with mom or dad and, and you can pick out a verse and say, God, what are you saying to me today? You know, because how do you get to know a friend? How do you get to know a friend? You talk to them, right? You spend time with them, you ask them questions, you get to know them. It's the same way with God. If you want to know him better, then you spend time with him. And the more time you spend with him praying and reading the Bible, the more you get to know him. You know how if your friend calls out your name, you recognize their voice? And you know whoever that friend is that they're calling you? It's the same thing with God. That's why it's so important that we learn to spend time with God so we can recognize his voice when he talks to us. God wants to be our friend. He wants to be your very best friend. And the way that you get to know your best friend is the same way that you can get to know God. He wants to get to know you. He wants you to get to know him. So what do we have to do this week to get to know God? Read our word and pray. And when you read your word, remember to ask him, God, what are you saying to me? Help me to recognize your voice like my very best friend. As we start to wrap up, I want to say this blessing over you. May you feel and know God's presence this week, and may he help you hear his voice and joyfully follow him. Kids, y'all are amazing. The best group of kids I've ever seen. And I love you so much. I miss you so, so much. For those of you who have been able to come to church with your families, I've had such a blast getting to see your faces. It's so awesome to see you. And for those who haven't had a chance to come yet, I just want you to know that I miss you and I'm sending you a really, really big hug. Okay, couple of announcements coming up this week. Super, super, super exciting. We are having a Tab Kids Virtual Spirit Week, okay? What does that mean? Some of you might have Spirit Week at school, so each day of the week is a different theme. And so you dress up and take a picture, basically what it is. So ask your parents to check out our Facebook and our Instagram because I'm gonna share what the different days of the week are. What you need to do is dress up for whatever that day is, have mom or dad take a picture, upload it to your Facebook, your Instagram, some sort of social media, tag us, LTAB Kids, so that way I can see your pictures. And the more you participate, the better chance you have of winning some really, really cool prizes. So don't forget to participate. Tell mom and dad to check out for some announcements that I'll be sending out. 
so you can have all the information and we're gonna have a really 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 awesome week i'm so excited also 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 don't forget to tune in wednesday night big things are happening we're getting to know how to follow jesus we're getting to know jesus whoa how awesome is that and we're studying the life of peter awesome guy he's helping us dive in more on what it means to follow jesus so i can't wait to see you real soon on wednesday night 7 p.m and if i don't see you then i'll see you sunday morning all right i love you my friends my little chicken nuggets you have an awesome fabulous fantastic rest of your week see you soon